Hey everyone, April Dunham here. I wanted to do a quick beginner tips and tricks video to show how you can handle and work with SharePoint complex field types in Power Apps. Specifically, I wanna show how to patch person, choice, and lookup columns. But first, here's the intro. First, I want to level set and explain what I mean by a complex field type. When you're working with SharePoint specifically, you can have multiple different types of fields in your list and libraries. You can have single line of text field, multi-line, drop down choice fields, numbers, currency, all these different types of fields. But when we're talking about within the context of Power Apps specifically, there's a few field types that are considered complex and require a little bit of additional work to use. Those fields are lookup columns. So like what I have here, a lookup column in SharePoint allows you to make a reference or pull values from another list. So that's what I have here with the client lookup. It's actually pointing to a client's list that I have here on the same SharePoint site. The other complex field type is a choice field, which is what we have here with the status field. So this just allows you to manually enter in choices that the user can choose from. And then finally, we have a person or group field which is what the project manager field is. This is tied to Active Directory and it lets you pull users from your Active Directory. So if we just do a new item here directly in the SharePoint list, you'll see that this is how a choice field looks. The lookup field for client actually looks just like the choice field, except it's pulling from that SharePoint list. And then the person field allows you to type in someone's name, pulls it from Active Directory and you can select them. So these are the type of fields we're going to look at how to interact with these within Power Apps and patching them back to the data source. Now, if you're using form controls in your Power Apps, you really don't have to worry about handling how to patch these complex field types because the form control kind of handles that for you. But if you are wanting to do something like we see here on this screen and build out an independent form with your own text boxes and drop downs, then you'll need to patch that. And this is where working with these complex fields comes into play. So on the screen here, you see that I just have a text box to hold the project name, but then I've also went into input and added a dropdown control to hold my status choice field. Let's take a look at the status choice field in Power Apps first. To populate those values on the app on start, I'm creating a collection called status values and I'm mapping IDs and the values of the options in my choice field. So what I had to do, if I go back to my SharePoint list, I would just go in and edit this column, find what these values are, copy them, and come back over here and store them in a collection so that I can populate my dropdown with these values. Now you'll notice that I'm adding an ID. Now when we go to patch this, it's going to expect not only the value, but also an associated ID. Now we didn't see an associated ID in our choice field back in SharePoint, but there's one implied and that is according to the order that you have the choices in. So looking back on SharePoint, you see pending was first, going all the way down to finish, which is the last, and there's four items. So I need to come in when I'm wanting to populate this dropdown and map an ID and the corresponding value, obviously making sure that the case and the spelling matches what is in my SharePoint choice column. So now I can go and I can use this in the items property of my choice field. So I'll set its items property to that status values collection. This is just the setup work needed so that we can have our values in there and then we can go and patch it. For these lookup fields, I used a different type of control called a combo box. The reason I'm using the combo box is because it allows me to search the field. So if you have a list of choices that's going to be rather long, you're better off using the combo box so that you can search it and not have to scroll through an infinitely long dropdown list. So you see here, I can just type and it will filter the list of items for me. For these values for the lookup, if I click on the combo box, go to the items property, you'll see I'm just binding that directly to the client's list. So I've went in here to my data sources, added in the client's list as a data source, and I'm binding the items property of the combo box directly to that. Now for the person field, I'm also using a combo box because there could be several items in this dropdown but let's look at its items property. Since this is a list of people, I'm binding this to the Office 365 users connector. So again, I've went in here into my data source, 
and added this Office 365 Users Connector. This allows me to pull in user profiles from Active Directory. So now that I have all of my data stored, now I need to figure out how to patch this or write it back to my SharePoint list. Here I have a button. If we look at its on select property, we'll see we have this really long formula. Now for a patch, the first thing that it expects is to pass in the data source that you want to write to, which is my project list that we just looked at. Then you need to tell it what record you're patching. So in this case, I just want to patch a brand new record so we can use the defaults function and pass in the name of our data source to tell it that this is a new record in the projects list. Now, when we're patching, we got to type in the name of the field that we want to patch to and then separate that out with a colon and then the value that we want to patch. For a simple field type, like a single line of text, we can just put in the column name like title and then pass in the associated value, which in our case is this text box project text value. Now let's look at the status field, which that was our choice field type. You'll see that it's a little bit trickier to patch this particular type of field. First, you need to type in the field name in your semicolon, but then wrap it in curly brackets. And we need to tell it the O data type of the field. So we're gonna use this Azure Connectors SharePoint list expander reference. Then this is what I said earlier, where it expects an ID and a value. So within here, we're gonna have an ID and we're going to set it to the drop down status field that we have there, dot selected dot ID. And then for the value, set it to the selected value. Now let's look at the client field, which is our lookup field. The syntax for this is the same as the choice column. So I'm just gonna point this directly to my combo box, client dot selected and get the ID for the ID property. And for the value, this is going to be when you set up the lookup column originally. So we'll just, Go back to SharePoint here and we'll take a look at this client lookup column. So when you're setting up lookup columns, you choose the column to surface up as a selection. So what I chose was the title column. So for the value property, you'll want to use whatever you have there. So that's why we have selected.title. And finally, we have the person or group field type, which is our project manager field. For that, you need to pass it in a few different properties. And the only ones that really matter here are the claims display name and email. So you can leave the department job title and picture blank, but you'll need to make sure that for the claims, you can just use their email address. So I'm pointing that to my person combo box and getting the selected property and the email. For the display name, getting the selected display name and then email for the email. That's pretty much all there is to it. So we'll just play this, create a new item here. I've selected my lookup value, my dropdown value, and my person value. We'll just patch that. And there you go. It looks like it submitted successfully. There's all the choice, lookup, and person values populated. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video.